Hello everyone, it is Dr. Newell and we are going to get started with our read aloud for this week. We are continuing our journey through the great black heroes, five famous writers. This week's reading will be about Gwendolyn Elizabeth Brooks. Gwendolyn Elizabeth Brooks born 1917. Gwendolyn Elizabeth Brooks was born on June 17, 1917 in Topeka, Kansas. Her mother was a school teacher. Her father was a janitor. After Gwendolyn's birth, the family moved to Chicago, Illinois. Young Gwendolyn was quiet and shy. As she grew older, Gwendolyn learned to love words. Her nose was always stuck in a book. She could read two books a day. Gwendolyn especially loved poems by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, a black poet. When she was only seven years old, Gwendolyn began writing rhymes and poems in a special notebook. Gwendolyn's mother encouraged her, you're going to be the lady Paul Lawrence Dunbar, exclaimed Mrs. Brooks. Mrs. Brooks did Gwendolyn's chores so her daughter could spend more time writing. Gwendolyn's father gave her a desk. She loved reading and writing at her desk. She wrote about love, death, and nature. She wrote two or three poems a day. One day, Gwendolyn came across Writer's Digest, a magazine that listed publications where writers could send their work. She was very excited to discover that others were writing about their feelings too, and they were getting published. Right away, Gwendolyn sent her poem, Eventide, to American Childhood, a children's magazine. Her poem was published in 1930. She was 13. Gwendolyn kept writing in high school. She sent her poetry to professors and writers. They wrote back giving her advice. Then when Gwendolyn was 16, she met the poet Langston Hughes at a poetry reading in church. She showed him her poems, Langston read them. Then he smiled and said, these are good. You must continue to write. Gwendolyn later said he was an inspiration. While still in high school, Gwendolyn wrote poems for The Defender, a black Chicago newspaper. She kept to herself. She didn't go to school dances or sports games. Other children thought she was strange. After high school, Gwendolyn attended Wilson Junior College in Chicago, Illinois and graduated in 1936. Two years later, she met Henry Lowington Blakely II. He was a writer too. They married and had two children, Henry and Nora. Gwendolyn could never learn enough. She could never learn enough about poetry and poets. In 1941, she heard about a poetry workshop for young black writers and joined the group. Writers shared their work with each other. Gwendolyn wrote poems about black people and about what she heard or saw on the streets. Gwendolyn received her first poetry award in 1943 from the Midwestern Writers Conference. Her first book of poems, A Street in Bronzeville, was published two years later. The poems were about people who lived in her Chicago neighborhood. In 1950, Gwendolyn Brooks received the highest honor, a Pulitzer Prize Award. Pulitzers are awarded to outstanding literary writers or journalists. Gwendolyn won the prize for Annie Allen, a book about the life of a young black girl. Gwendolyn was the first black writer to win the Pulitzer. She beamed with pride and joy. Gwendolyn Brooks wrote many more books. In 1956, she wrote Bronzeville Boys and Girls, a poetry book for children that shows how they view the world. She traveled near and far, reading her poems to students and anyone else who would listen. Gwendolyn wanted young people to love poetry too. She taught poetry in schools in Illinois and New York. 
She gave poetry awards to talented young poets. She used her own money to pay for the awards. In 1967, Gwendolyn attended a Black Writers Conference at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. The spirit of the young Black poets energized Gwendolyn. Soon, soon after, she chose to have her work published by Broadside Press and later Third World Press, two Black-owned publishing companies. Gwendolyn wanted to help as much as she could to make these companies successful. It was important to her that Black-owned companies publish books too. Aloneness from 1971 and The Tiger Who Wore White Gloves from 1974 were two of her books for children published by Black presses. In 1985, President Jimmy Carter gave Gwendolyn a special job. He asked her to become the consultant in poetry to the Library of Congress. She would write poems for special occasions, such as holidays. She was the first Black woman to have that job. This honored poet has won awards from the American Academy of Arts and Letters, the Poetry Society of America, and the National Women's Hall of Fame. She was named the Poet Laureate for Illinois. Schools have been named in her honor. In Chicago, Illinois, Chicago State University created the Gwendolyn Brooks Center for African American Literature and Culture. Gwendolyn Brooks celebrated her 83rd birthday in the year 2000. She is a professor of English at Chicago State University and continues to write poetry every day. All right, class. So we just did a great reading on a wonderful author, Gwendolyn Brooks. And what I'd like for you to do is first think about how her writing changed her life. Think about how when she was a young girl, she would take time to write and her parents loved the fact that she was into writing so much that they would do her chores so that she could continue writing. What does that tell you about the power of writing? Your question to answer is how did writing change her life? The next question I would ask is that you consider that she was able to meet a famous writer as well. I don't know if you guys remember, but our one of our readings before from the same book was about Langston Hughes. Okay. When she met Langston Hughes, she showed him her poems. He looked at them and he made a statement. He said, these are good. You must continue to write. What I want you to think about when you hear that knowing all that she accomplished after meeting him. How did the words of that famous author impact her writing career? If it were you, and this is open to all of us about whatever we are passionate about, okay? From my basketball players, my track stars, my baseball players, my football players, my writers, those of you who are artists, you love drawing, for my mathematicians, for my scientists, for my history buffs, for my kids who just love learning, for my kids who love to grow food in the garden, for those of you who love to cook, for those of you who just love to ask people questions. Think about this. If you were able to meet someone that that studied the same things that you study or that would be considered a professional in what you enjoy doing. And they gave you encouraging words such as these are good, you are good, continue to do what it is you do. How would that impact your life? Now, at the end of this book, it says that um, Gwendolyn Brooks continued to teach um, English at Chicago State University and continues to write poetry every day. Well, this 
is an older book. So that was true during that time. Of course, she has passed on since then. All right. I just wanted to let you guys know that. But the third question that I have for you, how does what Gwendolyn Brooks did impact your life as a young person? Especially for those of you that we know are writers. How does it feel knowing that just at 13 years old, she was able to publish? How does it feel that knowing um, that she was so close to your age? Because that's not that much older than you. She had to start writing much younger to have such great skill at 13. How does that impact your thinking about your own writing? All right, that is it for our read aloud for today. And um, I look forward to seeing your answers either on Flipgrid, through your student portal on Class Dojo, or as a response to this post on Class Dojo. Have a great one.